uh, with Mike uh, at one of his pair programming sessions and I was like, okay, is there anything I can do for you because pair programming was quite fun, I've never done it before. Um, and he was like, okay, why don't you try this? Now I got this job, I was like, okay, yeah, let's go ahead. Um, okay, so, uh, yep, um, I'm here to talk about how to get a job as a junior data scientist. Th these jobs are actually quite rare. Um, and they have gotten slightly rarer, so uh, you have to bear with me, but all not, yeah, basically it's still possible as long as you don't constrain yourself to just the title data scientist. And there'll be lots and lots of anecdotes ahead because these, uh, this basically reflects my own experiences. But, yep, so uh, a little bit about me, I am at the Singapore government, I just started actually uh, as a junior data scientist. Um, yep, and before I go any further, you saw the disclaimer just now, but yes, this is very important. Um, this, these are my own views, not anyone else's views, not anyone, especially not my employers. Yep, okay, so... <laughs> yeah, okay, so today this is roughly what I'm going to cover. Uh, I'm going to talk about what companies uh, want from data scientists and some differences versus the more common data analyst JD. Uh, what a data scientist actually does, uh, some resources and portfolio examples if the second point doesn't actually scare you enough, and then pathways to that first data science role and questions you should ask. Um, the reason, the other thing is that I'm not sure if how, how many of you are actually familiar with like uh, what a data scientist actually does. Can I have a show of hands first? Like, yeah, so, okay, so basically not the majority. If you get bored, you can start digging your nose or like put your hand on your head or something, so I know to speed up. Yeah, like I, I'm trying to make it entertaining for everyone. Okay, so uh, before doing this talk, I thought I would do a bit of homework, lah, okay? So I went to Job Street and I scraped a bunch of job descriptions and I put it into a word cloud. The word cloud is pretty, <laughs> but I didn't use code to do it. I just chucked it on wordclouds.com. Yep, so, yes, because it's prettier than the Python one, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so unfortunately, there were only 85 positions open on Job Street when I scripted at midnight two, two nights ago. Uh, so I took about 40 and I did some very minimal pre-processing and uh, clearly what comes up, jumps out at you is like, you know, uh, people seem to want machine learning experience, models, business. Um, in one corner, I think you can see Python, yay! Um, and you can also see SQL if you look hard enough. Um, and I think there's MATLAB somewhere, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so data scientists, that's data science. Um, what about data analysts, which actually has basically about 10 times as many job descriptions, uh, job descriptions available on Job Street. Um, basically, you can see, uh, yeah, things like business experience and analysis and email, I don't know why. Um, somewhere in there, there is Excel. You can also see Python in the bottom left, uh, sorry, the bottom right-hand corner. And actually quite a bit of SQL, which is great. So, yep, companies seem to basically want experience, but if you don't actually have experience and you might be doing something completely different, what can you do, right? Um, you have to get a bit lucky. <laughs> But there is a line in the song that says you stay up all night to get lucky. So I uh, like that take on it. You basically have to prepare a lot and just keep applying. So yeah, now that you know how competitive it actually is, um, what does a data scientist actually do, right? Um, okay, quite briefly, uh, data scientists frequently, this is just a generalization because there are a lot of different companies and for each company, the role could be a little bit different depending on the business needs. Okay, so what do DSs do? They get the problem statement from their managers or whichever stakeholders and then the data, which uh, can come in many different forms. Yep, membrane variety. So then you clean the data to the best of your ability um, and you try models to predict some outcomes, whatever is in line with the problem statement with your manager. Um, you update your stakeholders and go back to one, so it's kind of project driven that way. Uh, also, at the very bottom, you've seen that I've uh, basically put down that you have to keep up re research for new ideas, basically uh, for more new toys to play with, although don't quote me. Um, yeah, but the field is moving very, very fast, so yep. Okay, so how do data scientists stack out against analysts? Um, you can see on the scientist column, you tend to look at models, you tend to be more project based, and the uh, requested skills tend to be. Uh, Python sometimes are uh, SQL databases, keeping our research, and analysts are ten they tend to do more business as usual things. Like for instance, Grab has a lot of analysts looking at KPIs and monitoring them with dashboards. 
um, or they churn out reports uh, which they can do with SQL or they could do in Tableau, um, yeah, which basically are just multiple dashboards into a PDF file because this is reality. <laughs> it's not, not everybody has a license uh, in, in real life. Yep. So frequently requested skills are, again, databases, quite often, quite often Excel um, as a backend and data visualization tools such as um, Tableau, Click, um, yeah, a, a number of others. D3 is not that common. Yeah, okay. In reality, this is taken from February. I think it's possibly gotten worse. Um, so this tweet is from this lady who is a data scientist, and she basically put a poll on her Twitter asking, how often do you, how, how much do you spend uh, of your time, 60% of your time, like, cleaning data and the overwhelming response was basically most people with the title data of data scientists spend over 60% of their time cleaning data. Yep, uh, and only 23% spend 60% of their time analyzing and predicting data and you know there's still some work to do in production so Daniel we'll look for you at some point. Yep, so uh, this is also reality, this was from my previous job. <laughs> Uh, we were trying to figure out how come two versions of the same thing didn't give us the same results. In fact, they gave us completely opposite results. So fortunately, um, this is open source, it's from my own GitHub, so you can look at it if you want. But uh, basically what was happening was that uh, the original uh, guy who wrote the package um, said, okay, like we have this, and then the guy who wrapped it in R uh, said, oh, you know, when I was writing the wrapper, I thought it would be good to change the random number generator, and so the results are completely different. Yeah, that, that will become your life sometimes. It depends. So we couldn't figure it out, that's why we asked. But uh, I would have been able to figure it out eventually if I had looked through the source code, maybe. <laughs> Except one was in C++, that would have been fun. Yeah, okay, so also reality, understanding this paper. <laughs> Uh, the second page is actually what you would have to put into code. Basically, this is um, how you would want to formulate uh, some um, features. <laughs> so you have to force fit your features to look something like that. Yeah, okay. So this is also reality. This is at the student level, a new paper from Stanford CS224 class. Um, it's, it's about the model BERT. Uh, which just came out in October 2018 and already has been integrated into Google search. So, um, yeah, you can see it's quite competitive. The students are doing, I, I, it looks like a fairly good job to me, but I'm not an expert, so yeah. Um, so basically you end up constantly studying, uh, yeah. So after seeing that, how many of you are still interested? You'll be spending most of your time doing data cleaning and crying tears of blood at like, you know, this, <laughs> right? Because besides data cleaning, you still have to understand this and sometimes put it into production and do some differentiation so you can change the loss function, which actually happened. Yeah, so how? Still interested? Or do you want me to go home? <laughs> okay, so if you are still interested, actually this is the cool stuff. Um, I really like this. I don't know how many of you have seen this. Oh, shoot, sorry. Yes, so this is a car park space detector built with mask RCNN is an object detector and the tutorial is actually here. You just have to search for car park detector. I think you should be able to find it. Lots of copycats. Yep. Um, and in under 500 lines of code. But the trick is how to collect the data and label it and, you know, train it such that you produce result. That is the hard part, right? Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Then, or you could try doing things like challenges. This is a challenge. Uh, long time, well actually not so long time ago, by grab. Um, this is computer vision, this I think graphs, yeah. And then this one, I'm not too sure, I didn't really look at it, but yeah. Um, I thought this was quite interesting because these are real common real world problems. <laughs> yep. Okay, so some tools that you might want to consider picking up. Uh, oops. So Python plus your library of choice, because Python has the most things. Uh, it's like a buffet, la. you just decide on what your favorite things are. The, fa the basic stack is usually Pandas, NumPy, SKLearn, and Keras, and PyTorch, which covers uh, machine learning, deep learning, and data cleaning. Uh, data cleaning is actually very, very important. <laughs> Possibly more than anything else. Uh, also SQL. But then you have to figure out how to run a database, which is okay, Ken. Yeah, so um, within deep learning itself or machine learning, you have to pick a specialization because you saw the grad thing, right? It's actually three different things. 
Um, no one, frankly, has the time to cover everything. So you pick one and you stick with it and possibly you do a lot of Kegel. So you figure out what people are doing and what the latest research is because there's a mad rush to identify uh, state-of-the-art methods because then you can just go, hey, I win because my model is bigger than yours, which is a bit of a problem, but you know, sometimes it works. So then uh, one of the other things that you can do, which I think not a lot of people are doing, are end-to-end -end machine learning and deep learning projects. One of them is the car park detector thing, but try not to copy from it because it's very obvious. <laughs> yeah. Then, obviously, after you've done all of that, you want to use GitHub to show that you can uh, you know, use version control. Uh, you might also want to consider open source contributions, which is something I'm personally working on. Um, if you can, you try and win a challenge or two, then all of that together gives you enough experience to stand a good chance of when you get to the interview, you have something to talk about for at least like 10 minutes. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, okay, so anyway, resources I like, uh, which I personally found useful, like, I wish someone had told me this when I first started, because I had to Google, spend a lot of time on Reddit, figuring out what to do. So, uh, Twitter is something that a lot of people actually use. I think OpenAI is active on Twitter. OpenAI is also active on Reddit. This is Kaiming He, responding to some criticism of Kaiming He on Reddit. Like, I think this was in... April, I can't tell. Yeah, okay, so uh, then GitHub, also you can see this, uh, papers with code. The, oh, the two guys uh, just now responding to me, one works at Amazon, I think the other one works at Criteo, which is, uh, is uh, basically ad tech company. Yep, okay, so I'm not getting paid to say any of this, uh, but I like Pi Image Search and the guy who did the car park detector, and I also like Fast AI. Yeah, so if you are still interested, <laughs> This is the slightly more controversial part. Uh, pathways to that first data science role, it might not be that straightforward. Okay, so this is, I, I went to school. I'm actually still in school. It's been about two and a half, coming to three years. I only graduate like probably, hopefully end of the year, maybe not next year. Yeah, so the unintended consequence of this going to school for a career change thing is networking. I know everyone has a different starting point and not everybody might be able to go to school like I did. Um, so some of you are going to boot camp, some of you are trying to self-teach. Um, personally, I felt that going to school was actually worth it because of the networking, um, but you might beg to differ. <laughs> the other thing was that going to school allowed me the time to uh, do all these projects. Uh, these are some, um, but and under quite a lot of time pressure uh, because each semester is like 13 weeks, you basically only have about a month and a half to deliver because you're learning about the latest developments in the in the basically that domain like NLP or deep learning during uh, sorry like computer vision uh, during the other seven weeks yep so yep this is I, I might be biased because this is my personal standpoint um, the other thing is I want to address this when which emerged a little bit when I was talking to some of you is that <laughs> could the field be saturated um, I personally found it very hard to get a junior data scientist job it was difficult for me. It was a lot easier for me to settle for something uh, in business intelligence. Um, yeah, so, or, you know, not doing really data science, but data engineering uh, or data cleaning in computer vision, which is really a big unaddressed problem, apparently. But this guy is uh, pretty qualified and he just posted today. Um, okay, I'm going to summarize his wall text. Um, he's basically a machine learning engineer who has a PhD in unrelated things, basically physics. And he's like, okay, so I have a few papers and you know these, bu these buzzwords. Uh, in the first paragraph, he has a bunch of buzzwords. I don't know if you can see them. He's like, oh, I've created again. And you know, I have a text, yeah, basically like again, um, that was better than uh, the best thing before GP2, which is a very powerful text generator. Um, and he's got a bunch of things, but he's like, I can't get a data scientist job, what do, right? So it's incredibly, incredibly competitive. Um, yeah, and then the other, the other problem is that uh, this is actually a graph taken from um, someone's GitHub repo. He scraped uh, the job positions of before and after you do a master's. Um, basically, the dotted line is anyone below the dotted line took a pay cut after. You can see quite a lot of people did that, especially the people earning more than $5,500 a month, which is where the two lines intersect, right? So after you are aware of all of this, if you still want to do it, <laughs> I mean, these are some potential starting points, lah, okay? Depends on what you like. Personally, I like coding, so uh, I tried the research. I, I was actually a research engineer, okay? Um, yeah, basically, a research engineer implements uh, 
implements algorithms for the research scientists or basically data scientists. Okay? Um, if you like visualization and are good at it, um, data analysts and BI specialist roles are a lot more common, basically 10 times as common as your normal data scientist role. Um, if you have good backend fundamentals, you might want to consider machine learning engineer or big data engineer. Yep. So these are, yeah, and I don't think I have that much time to uh, talk about this, but uh, we can go back to this later. Basically, every role has its problems. Like, you know, uh, the data architect might have unpredictable monthly bills, which we saw just now. Yeah. Um, and the data analyst will definitely have problems with using Excel as a backend because that's quite common in many, many places. Yeah, Excel. Let's go. Okay, so how, I mean, like, you know, uh, after you've picked your specialization, um, how do you find the right one? I mean, job. This is actually a slide from nine years ago by SoftBank. The link is given below. I made it bigger so you all will believe me. You can go to the link later and find it. Okay, this is their 30-year vision. Huh? I shit you not, it happened. Sorry. Um, okay, so, you know, the whole point is that maybe if you looked, did a bit of due diligence on SoftBank, maybe uh, recent developments regarding SoftBank might not be so surprising. Um, because they had some companies which I think reflected this sort of ethos. Yep. So um, that aside, I hope I made the point about doing your own due diligence. Um, make sure you apply uh, and prepare for rejections. And um, when you are doing the whole process, make sure you understand your strengths. This is very, very generic, right? Um, but yeah, like I like to ask personally factual questions about the job, like what do you use as a backend? If I had asked this question, I would have not made the mistake of accepting a role there or interview, spending so much time on a company that eventually just used Excel. Uh, yeah, or like is there version control? Do they know what that is? Uh, or what two things do you spend the most time doing if they say meetings, what are you going to do, right? Um, yep, okay, so personally a green flag for me is a technical interviewer because I like being technical, other people might not like it, so this is my thing. Yep, okay, so in summary, I don't know if this has been 20 minutes, um, yep, get your hands dirty, know what the code does, please don't just say model selected for best accuracy because candidates have been rejected this way, not by me, but I, I get a lot of feedback about this, I'm like, I'm sorry, but you know, <laughs> yeah, okay, then um, the second point is that there are many paths into data, the field is constantly evolving, um, and we can go back to that slide later to look at roughly what the different paths are. And then um, when you are doing the interview process, it's very common sense, lah. but yeah, do your own due diligence, ask a lot of fact-checking questions, otherwise like this, okay, like this. Yeah, okay, questions? <laughs> yeah, if not, then yeah, I think that's it. Yep. Thank you. No Jared. worries.